Hello, my name is Gary Menas and I love plants. Yeah, so every time I travel, I come back to uh, that kind of massacre in my living room and I'm kind of sick and tired of it, so I want to do something about it, right? So I thought about it for a while and decided that we can do a watering system with some lighting, right? So while I'm gone, there's some sort of, some sort of automated thing that will water my plants. Because asking uh, other people to do that for me is... Well, it means social interaction and I don't do those kind of things. So the lighting part is pretty simple. All we need to do is just buy some full spectrum lights from Amazon, hook them up and we're Gucci. The watering part though, we need a plan for that one, right? So I'm thinking that what we can do is we can get an Arduino, we can hook it up with some moisture detector, right, uh, for the soil. And whether the soil, whenever the soil is dry, the moisture, the moisture detector will tell Arduino to turn on a pump that is going to pump water into the soil. It will make sense, I promise. So now I'm going to order a bunch of stuff online and then wait a week and start doing the video then. So basically for this to work, I use the sweet, sweet Patreon money to get a bunch of stuff from Amazon, right? That you can see here, we have like an Arduino board, a bunch of wires, a few motors and whatnot. So thanks for that, Patreons. Very much appreciated. And also, also we need a 3D printer, which I also have. And we need a 3D printer because I have absolutely no skill whatsoever in making stuff. And this bad boy brings me to cheating as close as I possibly can get. Um, the problem with it, the problem with it is that we have a bunch of wires. We have a crap ton of wires and they are not connecting to anything and I will need to wire it for this to work. So that's going to be the first thing that we do. Uh, once we've done that, we will move on to our the main project, I guess. It's alive. It does work and well, we'll see if it works. At least it, it turns on. So I have my power supply that I stole from a computer. I have my breakout board and these two wires, I'm not sure if you can see them, but these two wires are basically the on switch and I just duct tape them together so that it actually turns on. And then we have a relay that is so that my heater bed doesn't burn my house down. This is really useful. Then we have the MK, MKS Gen L board um, that I just got from AliExpress for real cheap. And a bunch of wires that come into the printer. Uh, long, long time ago, this was a Tivo Tarantula. Right now it's something else. A bunch of mods here. So. Technically, I'm just going to look at the user interface. If I kind of say that it should home, it should work, right? So, and home. Kind of. Yeah. There we go.
Perfect. Okay. So that works, which means that now I can kind of move it in any axis I want. So let's just move it to the middle right here. And move Z. Let's move it up. This little boy. So it's super crooked as well. I guess it's all the carrying and throwing it around that's making it super crooked. Um, right. Let's check other stuff. So I do have temperature readouts here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's even focusing, but just trust me. By the way, the firmware is Fat Cox 1.3. Yeah. That's basically cat and fox, only that you switch the letters around and you get. Never mind. Um, so we have that going on. That works. It reads the temperatures. The fan is not spinning. Oh crap, the fan is not spinning. Maybe it's because of this wire right here. Let's see if it's gonna spin now. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's solved. That is spinning now. So now we have a functioning printer. Is it pretty? No, it's not. This is a mess, but it is going to do some nice prints for us. Right, what's next? I need to kind of make some room here, so I need to figure out where the printer is gonna gonna be for the next few days of, of, of printing. So, today is the second day of uh, our little project right here. I'm wearing the same shirt for continuity purposes. And now let's start building up our wiring system. Okay, so basically we have this Arduino Uno here uh, that I got from Amazon from like 30 bucks or 20 bucks, I don't remember. And we will be using this as our brain, right? So for the wiring system to work, we need one of these doodads here. Uh, can't really see if you can see it, but this is basically a moisture sensor. By the way, all of the stuff that I have here, I will have the links to the Amazon pages in the video description so that you can check them out. So this is a moisture sensor and basically the way it works is, let's find, let's find a plant. Okay, so basically the way it works is you just kind of cram it in there and then it det detects uh, if the ground is wet or if it's not wet. Really simple, really simple stuff. Plant goes here. Okay, so here we have our mo moisture, moisture sensor. It will connect to our Arduino with some wires, right? So we will need those. And then we will need uh, what's called a breadboard because there we will need more wires and more connections than what we currently have. And I, I got this app also from Amazon, a bunch of them for pretty cheap. Um, so we will need a breadboard and even more wires, right? Then we need something to feed Arduino with. So we'll be using this, ah, you can see it. this cable right here. Yeah, come here. This cable right here, I think it's nine volts. I don't know. Yeah, it's nine volts. So your regular Arduino cable. Also Amazon. Uh, then, Basically how it works is our sensor in the ground tells Arduino, yo, the ground is dry. And Arduino will tell our pump, will tell our pump, this guy right here, that, yo, you need to pump some water, right? You need to pump some water to make the ground not dry anymore. Right, so that's why we have a pump here as well. But the problem is that the pump needs 12 volts and Arduino can output five volts, meaning the pump will choke if we just try to power it with 
5 volts, right? So instead, the pump is going to be fed with a bunch of batteries. Yeah, a bunch of batteries. Eight batteries to be precise. Uh, that's going to give us quick math 1.5 times 8, 12. It's going to give us 12 volts. And that's going to power it. But the problem is, how do you control when the pump is running and when the pump is not running, you know, with, from the batteries? If we just connect these two like that, right, uh, the pump will constantly be running, right? So we need, like, to have a, like a sandwich of Arduino, the pump, and uh, the batteries. Uh, and Arduino needs to be in between those to control when the pump works and when it doesn't. So this is where we get one of these doohickeys right here. And this, my friends, is called a relay. So this is basically a, an electric switch. And the way it works is Arduino with its five volts will turn it on. And when this is turned on, then the relay will relay will relay, get it, the battery, like the, the, the volts from the battery to the motor. Well, that's at least the, the idea of it. And also more wires. Also, we have some, uh, what else do we have here? We have some pipes here for the water. And we have a cable <coughs> in there for connection to the computer thingy. And we have some growth lights uh, for, for all of this to kind of, you know, for, for the plants not to die because of the lack of light. Okay, so now let's jump straight ahead to actually wiring all of this. So here we are by the by the computer. Uh, everything is wired up. Uh, you can see. Wait, I need to learn how to use this camera is here. Okay, so you have the batteries here. The relay next to the motor. You have the Arduino itself. The soil connector or not connector, the detector, uh, soil moisture detector or sensor, and the breadboard just to give me more lanes for five volts and ground. And uh, I also have this cable right here, uh, which is basically USB-A to USB-B. And I'm going to use that cable. Everything lights up. Okay. So technically, now we are good to go in terms of programming it. Wait. So, programming. Here I have downloaded Arduino 1.8 that we just get it from the from the internet. Um, and once you open it up, you will always be greeted by this void setup, void loop. And here you just kind of write code. I believe it's uh, it's processing, right? What we're going to do is, first of all, we need to determine what kind of a sensor we're going to be using. Okay, so here, what i written down is basically that A0 pin, which is this guy right here, the black one. I, I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, basically the black wire is connecting to A0. 
A0 pin is my sensor, so I've just described it. And also that uh, I want to have some sort of a output value, and it's going to be like a full number, an integer, um, from, from that pin. So those are my two uh, variables. And also I've uh, said that I, I want to listen to uh, this device, this, this moisture sensor, over um, the serial, serial bus. And basically it should first write reading and then, uh, like that's the first thing that it does. And then once it initiates, uh, after two seconds, it should kind of start um, reading the analog. Right, so reading <clears throat> the A0 input right here. So basically it's analog read A0, right? So it's reading from that pin and it's printing it out to the serial, this output value. And why do I have this space here? Maybe I don't need it. So we have this output value here. It's basically reading the moisture contents. Right, and then we have a delay of one second so that it just doesn't go like. Brrr. Okay, so once this is done, we verify. So we click the verify button and let me drag this away so you can see this uh, bar here. There we go, that's done. And it's not going to complain, it's going to say like this is fine, it, it, it works. Right. Uh, once we've verified it, we can compile it or how is it called? Flash it? Just upload. We can upload it. I'm going to upload it. So now it, it says done uploading. That was super fast. Don't know why. Uh, but now I can click on here, serial monitor. I can click on here and here I can see the COM port and it says reading and now it's giving me values. And it's actually giving me values from this particular sensor. So now I need something moist. Oh. This says 452, right? Grab this off and let's find some dirt. And actually, I now remember that I have put it in dirt before. Pluck it in, like so. And now I can see that it says 805 instead of 840, meaning that this earth or dirt here is super uh, dry. So now we are going to water it a little bit. Please don't water the electrics. Yeah. So now it's watered. And where's my moisture sensor? There it is. And if I plug it in, it's gonna say 530 for everything. Sweet. So now we know what's wet and what's uh, not wet. More coding. Bam. Ooh, okay then. So this is done. Everything's fine here. The code is hopefully going to work. So I've changed up a few things. So here the dry limit is now set to 500. And we have the relay pin, which is set to be pin number four, which is right here. It's basically described as an output, meaning that it's going to kind of feed five volts down the line to the relay, like so. Then we have some serial bus nonsense, doesn't matter. Wait two seconds and begin the loop, right? And as it begins the loop, uh, first thing that it does, it describes the output value, uh, which is being read from our capacity. Center. I need to kind of, uh, I need the spot to be somewhere here. Hopefully. Yeah, let's do it like that. So I'm just going to hold the pot. Um, so it's going to, the, the sensor right here is going to see how, how dry the pot is. 
um, then we have our if statement. So if the dryness is higher than the dry limit, then it should turn on the relay. So high voltage. It should output the value into the serial and it should say near the value, it should say dry. And then give it a second delay and then turn off the, 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 the pump, right? The relay. Or else it should just give me the output value and say wet, right? And then wait one second and do, do the same thing again. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it larger a larger delay maybe let's see two seconds and uh, actually i'm going to for now say low ah screw it let's let's just see how how it works hi sure there we go let's just look at it upload take a look so it should be dry. And let's see. There we go. <laughs> so this guy is now working. Okay. Okay. Stop. Stop. Anyway, so so it is working now, right? Every every second, it's basically just or every two seconds, it's turning on and off the the motor. Um, so now we can actually make it turn off by making the, oh my god, how do we, by making this moist. And our limit is 500. Oh no, it's not, it's not moist enough. Shit. Shit. Some water. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Ah, uh, yes, now it's wet. Silence. Now it works. And it's gonna stay wet for, for, for a while. So there's still a lot of things to do, but we have a working, working system with a motor and a pump. So now what I'm thinking is we need to make this thing pretty and we need to make it work nicely and also calibrate it a little bit, right? It's, it's a little bit too, too fast and, and, and so on. But I'm going to do that tomorrow. Today I'm tired. So now it's time to do some 3D modeling. 
Um, everything that I will be 3D printing, of course, first of all, I need to 3D model out and I think we'll do it in a way that's a time lapse rather than me sitting down and doing it for five hours. So cue the time lapse. I hope you caught that. Uh, so by the end of this whole thing, I have uh, two boxes and one more extra little thing that I'll show later. Um, this box right here is basically for the moisture sensor and it holds all of the electronics and all of the wiring for the moisture sensor itself. And it has this little hole right here where the wires can kind of go out so it's just nicer i also numbered it one just so that i can keep track of which more mo moisture sensor is which uh once i have more than one of them uh then i have uh, this little box right here with the two ginkgo leaves ginkgo tree leaves so the box is basically held together by two screws here and here and if i move that the top away you can see this these slits here so this is for the wires this is for the usb port this is for the power and what we have inside is basically an arduino uh, we have the breadboard for all of the wiring we have four relays in total and the battery pack so the reason why we have four relays is because in the future i want to feed four pumps and four plants in in total with this setup so i have room for four relays um yeah and one more thing one little thing that i wanted to do is this octopus guy right here so this octopus guy is going to be um placed on top of the pot right and it's basically um going to distribute water into the pot right so i don't want the water to flow in only into one point i want it to flow it at at least three different points in the pot so this is uh, why i have these tentacles here if i isolate this and do clipping plane and move it up you can see that there are like these three openings here and if i move up there's one large opening here in, in its head, right? So let me kind of make another section of it just so that you can see better, right? This is how it, this is how it works, right? So one um, channel will come in here and it's going to basically um, distribute the water to three sides. So it, it should work, you, you'll see, you'll see. It makes sense. Also, it looks cute, I like it little cross-eyed octopus guy it's not an octopus i know but i got uh, lazy and i didn't model out all of the legs it's, who cares i'm the creator i do what i want <laughs> um cue the 3d print montage Okay, so here is the final assembly uh well not the final assembly but the test version of it um and i haven't recorded the the process of of me actually assembling it but i do have a few pictures here and there i will put them on the screen right now um so basically here we have um a, a few 
wires that are still sticking out and these will be used for additional motors uh, for additional sensors as well so this little box right here will not be just for one plan but rather it will be for four plans so it will be able to hold up four motors and four sensors um, it's basically the same procedure as i've shown before only that here it's going to be um, more wires that that's about it all right, so the way this works, well, I kind of already explained, explained it how it works. We have the sensor, we have the wire, we have the pump. When the sensor detects that there is not enough moisture in the soil, the pump will pump in the wire through the octopus into the soil. So let's take a look at how it's going to work. I will plug it out, make it as dry as I possibly can. And I have this turned off right now. Um, this this uh, whole assembly. Let's see. Okay, so you can see it. And now if I turn this on, what should happen? There we go. So yeah, it, it happened. You didn't really see it because it's just one second. But it did squirt some water. And now the next check is going to be in an hour. If this is still re reporting that uh, everything is dry, then it's going to squirt some more water in. There we go. So let's do it again. Turn this off. And turn it back on again. And notice that the moisture sensor is disconnected and also it's dry. So now when I turn this on, it should. There we go. A little bit of water. That's it. 